More game trailers need to turn their HUD off. I'm gonna tell you why this will make your game trailer better, and the very few exceptions to this rule. Hi, my name is Derek Liu, and this is Video Game Trailer Academy, a series of videos to help you make better game trailers. A game's heads-up display, or HUD, is a critical part of most video games because it provides essential information to the player, like their health stats, inventory, position, and more. A game's style of HUD can also quickly clue you into what game you're playing, like a beat-em-up, first-person shooter, RPG, or turn-based strategy game. But, when capturing footage for game trailers, I almost always recommend that people turn the HUD off, because it makes it much easier to absorb the most important information in each shot of the trailer. Our brains can only consume so much information at a time, and trailers are designed to throw a lot of new ideas at you in the space of a minute or two. The less information in each shot, the easier it will be to absorb. For the sake of the game's player, the HUD is designed to be clear and easy to read. For someone watching, it can be very distracting. Since the HUD is typically the only completely static thing on screen, your eyes can't help but gravitate towards it. It's sort of like watching a video with subtitles on and trying to not read them. You might be thinking, I have no trouble tuning out the HUD. I need to see it in order to understand the gameplay. But do you really? Like I said, the HUD can indicate genre, but once you've figured that out, do you need to see it for every single shot? Look at these shots from Paper Mario The Origami King. This shot is the first player-controlled gameplay in the trailer. The health meter and item HUD indicates this is quote, real gameplay, but does not much else than that. It's a Paper Mario game, so it should be no surprise there's a health meter of some sort in the game. And yet, several shots in this trailer include these HUD elements. This shot is here to show us Mario can pull down perforated cardboard, but do we really need to know what buttons to press in order to do this? That's really not the most exciting part of the shot. And here we see Mario collecting coins as he slides down a waterfall in a boat. We see the boat has health, there's a coin meter that you can throw confetti, move about, and jump. I think this shot is just here to show the waterfall and boat to show a little bit of variety. Everything else except the confetti we could have assumed for ourselves. These button prompts are really just distracting from the main point of the shot. When the HUD is turned off, it's simply easier to remember more of what you saw, like the game's setting, characters, art style, animations, and player verbs. These are the things a trailer needs to show, because they're what screenshots and text can't fully convey. More practically speaking, when the HUD is turned on, it might literally be blocking some of the things you'd otherwise see. The HUD is just like any other element of a trailer. Once it's understood, it's time to move on to a new idea. Most trailers won't even have shots long enough to let you see how the HUD is affected by what is happening on screen, like a health bar being depleted. So as soon as the genre is established, the HUD becomes pretty extraneous. Also, don't think of a trailer as the sole source of information about a game. If a person is truly interested in the game, they'll eventually get to a store page with screenshots, which can show all the HUD elements in a way which is easy to analyze. Okay. So there are some exceptions for when showing the HUD does benefit a game trailer. After all, some games don't have much else to show when the HUD is turned off. In these cases, it's best to show only as much as needed for the purposes of the individual shots and the trailer. For example, in this trailer I made for Heaven's Vault, you can see the HUD for the translation game mechanic, but I hid the button prompts because until you're playing the game, you don't need to know you can press X to quit out. In this trailer for Lonely Mountains Downhill, this HUD element indicates the game is a score chase where you're aiming for the fastest times. There's no other way to indicate this in the trailer other than a voiceover or a title card. But since people like to see as much quote, raw gameplay as possible, this was the most organic way to show this. Another great example of use of HUD is in this trailer for Company of Crime. The majority of the trailer looks like a scripted story cinematic, but when the camera pulls out, it reveals the HUD elements to indicate the story could have played out differently had the player achieved all their mission goals. By revealing the HUD, it also revealed the possibility space of the gameplay much more elegantly than a title card which would say something like, DYNAMIC GAMEPLAY! or YOUR CHOICES MATTER! The other time you want to have the HUD on is in a trailer or gameplay overview video made specifically to show exactly how the game plays via narration or a step-by-step -step walkthrough. In these videos, people expect to see the game exactly as it will look when they're playing it at home. 
It all comes down to this question. Does the HUD help communicate the key messages of the shot, the trailer, and the game's premise? Answer this question in a shot-by-shot -shot basis, and I think you'll find in the vast majority of times it's not necessary to show. A trailer is the most important marketing asset for a game, so you need to give it the space to do it what it does best, which is use the language of film and editing to focus on the experience and feel of the game, not the minute details. This goes especially if it's an announced trailer. People don't watch announced trailers for HUD elements and button prompts. They're looking for something new and interesting. If after watching the trailer, or even during the trailer, they're curious about HUD elements, that's great. That means they're intrigued, but they need something more, which is why you need screenshots in a store page as soon as possible to show these things off. And also, remember, there's always time between announce and release to do longer and more in-depth gameplay videos. But for trailers meant to announce a new game, show the audience why they're pushing the buttons, not the buttons they push. By the way, I send out game trailer making tips like this every Sunday via my mailing list, so if you'd like more, please subscribe at GameTrailerTips.com. And as always, thanks to my top Patreon supporters who help me make more videos like this.